Welcome to the Electronics Tools for Beginners video series. I'm going to be doing a video every single day, so make sure you subscribe to make sure you don't miss those. Also be a playlist down in the description and at the end of the video as well to go and watch more of the video series. So make sure you check them out. So in this video I'm going to talk about hand tools. You may sort of think, oh yeah, okay, I've got a screwdriver, I'm, I'm all set. Well actually, no. You can see from my selection here, this is only a small portion of the things I have. You need a lot more than that sometimes. So let's just go through an assortment I've grabbed here just to give you some ideas. Electric screwdriver. Handy to have, not essential, but nice. If you're doing lots of panel screws and things like that, you could use these quite a lot and it can save you a bit of time. It's quite handy to have, so make it easy for yourself. Get your little electric screwdriver. You have a normal screwdriver set. You actually want a full set of full-size screwdrivers. Um, there will be links for these things down below as well. So I'll be putting links for everything I mentioned here down below. If there's anything here you like to look of and think you should get, then check those links out and you can go and buy them yourself. I think just about everything here you'll be able to buy yourself. So yeah, screwdriver set there, full set. I've got another screwdriver over here which I'll keep up the top because it's convenient. Here's a set of nut drivers, metric nut drivers. So you can use these put on nuts and for dismantling equipment and things like that or attaching standoffs to circuit boards, that kind of thing, you know. It's always handy to have a set of nut drivers. I've got lots of different ones. I've got these ones, I've got some larger ones. I've got some which going into drills and I've got a selection. I've only shown a small portion of what I've got here. Wire strippers. This is just a wire stripper. You can adjust the tension slightly by adjusting this knob. You can change the length of the strip length here by adjusting this position. So you can always do the same length on a certain wire. If you do a set of wires, you can make sure it's all stripped to the same dimensions. You basically need to have one of these or something like it. There's different variants. There's different types of wire strippers. This is one is one I quite like. Crimpers, you need a stick of crimpers depending on what you're doing. Crimp terminals, different sizes. So I've got this one here which is like a ratchet and crimper. This one also a ratchet and crimper. For doing standard type terminals. This one actually means you have to crimp it all the way down so you can't not crimp it all the way. Here's another one here for doing smaller terminals. You need a selection like I said. Here's some bigger nut drivers. I've got a set of these things, I've grabbed a handful of them. Again, you need bigger things sometimes, usually it's for these larger sizes. Like, uh, I think this one here might be for used for um, potentiometers and stuff like that. It makes it easy to get them off. Especially if they're in like a hole, sometimes on some bits of equipment, the pots are inside a hole. So you can't actually get on them with the spanner and line to actually undo the nuts. So having a, a long reach type socket light is handy. Some long reach screwdriver bits, some flat blade ones. Some cross heads, different ones, it's Phillips and and PZ, Posi Drive. Got some long reach security bits as well, the security ones, so these get used for a bit. Here we have a whole bunch of hexagonal drives, all different sizes. These are used quite a bit for doing like Allen key bolts. So right? if you've got an Allen bolt, you can use a screwdriver instead of Allen key. It's easier. As long as it's not too tight, of course. There's a selection of bits here, just a standard bit set, quite a convenient set. Basically, everything you send here, I've got in my other bits anyway, but sometimes you might find that something's a bit different. Might be a weird size of one of these or something like that, maybe. But also, it means you can use one of these things, which is a ratchet and screwdriver. So you can actually get a bit. If you're in a tight space, you can get this in there at a right angle and you can do it up or undo it. If it's the kind of space you can't get a screwdriver in, you can use something like this instead. And this one also allows for a little mini socket as well. So you've got these little quarter inch sockets, I think they are. That'll fit on that. Another little electric screwdriver. This is a smaller one for doing smaller screws. If you're working inside bits of equipment, sometimes there's quite small screws and having a little electric one like this can be quite handy. It might be a confined space, you can just get that in there and you can just, off you go. This one actually comes with a set of bits as well. This was a review item, it's a well stick. So look for the brow stick review if you're interested in this particular one. You always need a knife. You don't necessarily need a round knife. Spudgers, you need spudgers. Plastic, metal, you need both. If you're worried about damaging the surface or damaging the join between two parts, you don't want to scratch it or something like that, then you need plastic ones. But sometimes you need metal ones because you need to be a bit more robust because the plastic ones just won't last, they won't survive it. Decent tweezers, you need some quite robust tweezers sometimes. And also you need some really fine tweezers, these for doing surface mount work. These are really fine tips on these. Don't stab yourself with them, they hurt. <laughs> these ones here, I haven't found anything like this. I've had these for know, 30 odd years. No idea where they came from, but they're really good tweezers. I wish I could get some more exactly the same as that because these are really nice. Little adjustable spanner, be surprised how often this comes in handy. Also, you want a spanner set, so I've just got one here because I don't need to show you the whole set, but get some common spanners which you'll need for doing potentiometers or things like that, common nuts and bolts you'll need to do, get some, have some nice handy. Another kind of adjustable spanner, I suppose. 
pipe wrench thing. Poly grips is what a common name is for these. Now, if you're working on things, the, it's not really suitable for a spanner because maybe it's, it's a round pipe or something like that. You can use these if you need to protect whatever you're working on without you know digging these grips in, wrap it in paper or cloth or something like that, and then you can use these without damaging it. You'd be surprised how often these come in handy. We also need some needle nice pliers. These are quite old ones. I've had these ones for a long time. I don't know, these are probably 20 odd years at least. I've had these ones. When you need needle nice pliers, you need them. Little hammer. I actually got a selection of different hammers, lots of different ones. If you see me doing test equipment repairs where I've got bits of panels which are bent or things like that where they've been dropped or just not been looked after properly, and sometimes you need to straighten those panels out. And having a hammer like this, which has got relatively soft faces on it, are good for repairing panels. So you can flatten them back out again if they've been bent. Or ones with different heads on, like a small rounded head or a small pointy head so you can get to corners, things like that. So they may be something you need. I see puller. I've got some better ones as well. I've got some ones which I featured in my bag not too long ago actually, which are like squeezable ones. You squeeze them instead and it actually pushes against the ball or the socket and pulls the chip from it. Those are much nicer. I'll probably link to those as well. This is a basic beginner one. This will do your job. Where it's basically got some hooks on it here and you hook them around the IC and pull it out. Thing with these, what I don't like about this particular style is that when you're doing that particular task of these type, is that you're actually pulling against the circuit board and you're putting a lot of stress on the board. And if it's only soldered on the top side of the board, for example, not on the bottom side, which can happen from time to time, you can actually potentially rip all the traces off the circuit board and rip the socket out with it or with the IC out with the socket in place. <laughs> so I don't like to use these that much. Yes, these do have a place, but I'd say get a different type if you can. These are cheap. That's the advantage of these. They're cheap. As long as you're really careful, you can use them. I mean, my preferred way of getting IC is actually use some angled tweezers like these. All right, what I actually do is I'll get these underneath the end of the IC and just gently lever it up each side, each end, and just gradually lever it up, and it'll bring it up. I actually prefer to do that rather than using something like this myself if I can't get something else in there. Side cutters. Now, you're going to need some side cutters. Oh, okay, here. These actually carry my 3D printer, my Ender 3. These are okay, but I suggest you to get some decent side cutters for doing electronics. So you need to cut off like component legs, wires. These are only meant for really light duty work. You probably want a couple of different sizes. You probably want a small one like this for doing finer work and something a bit larger for doing, you know, cutting wires and things like that, cutting larger wires or anything a bit more heavy duty. You don't want to be trying to do that with these, you'll end up breaking them. More screwdriver sets. This is a Pomona set, ESD safe set. This has got flat blade and crosshead screwdrivers in it. Pomona sent me these to do review on a while ago and they've been hand to have. I'm sitting on my side of my desk all the time. We've also got this iFixit set, which iFixit sent me for review as well. This is quite a big assortment. It's got two different screwdriver handles for different size bits because some of these are quite small. These have got like a small base and other ones I've got these larger types, standard types. I've had lots of situations where I've had to pull this out and use something from this kit to do a particular job. It's got kinds of weird bits like if you use of cell phones and all sorts of stuff. It's, it's quite a good versatile set. I keep the uh, desk and bags in there just to keep it dry, keep it in good condition. This is another I fix a kit which I was sent for review. This is like a different type. This has got spudgers in there and some metal spudgers and some tweezers, plastic spudgers, ESD strap. This is basically meant for doing cell phones and stuff like that. And another magnetic case and it's like a similar set to that one but this is all the smaller screwdriver set. Very nice, and I actually left a bit in there, interesting. You don't have to have iFixit gear, iFixit is high quality. I mean, you can also buy these less nice Chinese ones, I suppose. I've got some more Chinese kits as well, screwdrivers, some smaller ones. They're okay, but the quality is nowhere near as good as something like this. These are much better quality. You do get what you pay for, but yeah, it does pay to have quality though. And other hand tools. Pen and paper. When you're doing electronics work, you need to make notes. Sometimes if you're trying to design something, you may need to make notes about what you've done or how you're going to change something or something you're going to build, how you're going to organise it, how you're going to structure it. This is just a little small piece of notepaper. But you need pen and paper to make notes. Um, if you're repairing something, maybe you want to make notes about faults you've found, what you did to fix those faults as you're going along. Because sometimes they can be clues to other faults, like secondary faults. Because often there's a chain reaction between things if something's going wrong. Sometimes it helps to make notes about those things. There's plenty more things which I haven't shown here. That's what I thought would be a good starter to say, hey, these are the sorts of things you need to think about. As you find you need a certain thing, buy it. Or there's been a situation in the past where you wished you had that, then buy it, because next time you will have it. So make sure I leave the links down below to go and check out these items I've shown you. There's a playlist over here for the beginner series. There's a playlist over here that you should think you should watch. There's a subscribe link over here, which I think you should click on to subscribe and see my future videos. And there's a Patreon support link over here. There's also a thanks button down there if you want to contribute once. Catch you later.